Uh, hello everyone. So I'm here to talk about uh, reparameterization invariance metric on the space of curves. So um, this is uh, work uh, from my ongoing PhD, which I'm doing under the supervision of Marc Arnaudon from uh, the Mathematical Institute of Bordeaux and Frédéric Barbaresco from the <coughs> Space. So uh, let me start with a, a brief introduction on our motivations. So the goal is given a certain number of curves in a manifold M to find the, so not original compared to what's been already said, but to find the Frisch mean or median of, of these curves. So um, in the sense of Frisch, this means that we're looking for the curve that minimizes the sum of the distances or the squared distances to each curve that uh, we want to average. Now, um, okay, it's obvious that there are a lot of uh, applications in statistical analysis of trajectories and in, in shape analysis for more closed curves. Um, and so why are we looking at uh, curves in the general manifold? Well, because applications don't necessarily provide uh, plane curves. So if you have uh, traject large trajectories on the Earth, then you might want to look at curves on the, on the sphere. And, um, and when I talk about trajectories, it doesn't necessarily mean that the points represent uh, positions in space. They can, they can represent any, any object. And for us, they will be uh, covariance matrices. So our application will be specifically in uh, radar detection. So let me briefly remind you how a radar works. So a radar uh, sends radio waves to detect the position and uh, velocity of objects in its environment. So it sends um, a series of pulses, uh, and uh, between, between each pulses, two pulses, you get echoes that give you information on what you have. And so at the end of the burst, which is a, a series of pulses, if you, if you split the, if you, you suppose that your radar is looking in a fixed direction and you split the space in what we call distance cells, then at the end of the burst you have vectors of observations uh, corresponding to, to each uh, distance cell. And uh, so each echo gives an information on each distance cell. Okay, so um, we're interested in, radar, in target detection. So uh, the simple idea behind target detection is to say that, um, okay, if you want to know if there's a target in a certain cell under test, you compare the information that you have for this cell to the average information that you have on the cells of its environments. So if, if it's similar, you say that there is no target, and if it's significantly different, then you say that there is a target in your, in your distant cell. Um, so what's usually done in the target detection is the assumption that your vectors of observations are the realizations of uh, centered Gaussian stationary processes. And so instead of using directly your vector of observations, you can uh, use the, uh, you estimate the covariance matrix. And, uh, and so to compare the information of a, a given cell and, uh, and another, you compare uh, covariance matrices and so compute the distance. And this is when uh, information geometry comes in. Because now we're in the, on the statistical manifold of the covariance matrices endowed with the uh, Fisher information metric. Okay. Uh, we have an equivalent representation in the Poincaré disk, but I'm not going to talk about it. So um, it turns out that the applications that we're interested in, in those applications, the uh, stationary hypothesis is not uh, pertinent. So we're going to relax a little bit this hypothesis and look at um, and assume that our vector of observations are the realizations of locally stationary processes. And so instead of having one covariance matrix uh, for, uh, for each uh, observation cell, you have a series of, um, of covariance matrices for each cell. And so instead of having uh, a representation for, instead of having one point in the space of uh, toplitz uh, emission positive definite matrices, you have a path. So this is how we get uh, to having curves in the, in the manifold. And so what we need is the metric on, the, on this space of curves and, uh, and a way to compute the Frisch mean or median of several curves according to this metric. And this is because we need to average the information of the, of the cell reference cells. So this brings us to the definition of a Riemannian metric on the space of curves. So we have a Riemannian setting where you have a manifold M. Uh, M round is what I call the space of curves in M. We look at immersion, so smooth curves with a velocity that never vanishes. Uh, and so the idea is we equip, of course, uh, our space of curves with a Riemannian metric G, so the scalar product on the tangent on 
and then you can we can compute a geodesic distance. So um, since we're in the space of curves, the geodesic, the shortest paths that link to curves, are so are the optimal deformations between two curves. Um, so I just give a few notations so it's, so it's clear. Obviously, you always have two possible representations: one in the space of curves and round, and one in the manifold. So naturally, a point C uh, in the space of curves is um, is a curve in, in, the, in the manifold. Uh, a tangent vector H is a, is a vector field along the, the curve in the manifold M, and a path in the space of curves is a, is a surface, a deformation in the manifold. So, um, what properties do we want for our Riemannian metric on the space of curves? So, we want it to be a uh, reparameterization invariant. So, it means we want the metric to verify this equivalence property where phi is a, is a deform of the from 0, 1 to manifold M. Now, uh, this is a property that we want because then the distance, the geodesic distance induced will be the same even after we reparameterize uh, our curves by the same, uh, the same deformorphism phi here. If we compose by the same deformorphism phi, then the distance doesn't change. Now, if we want the stronger property of having a distance that stays the same even if we reparameterize by two different uh, reparameterizations phi and psi, then it's, it's fine because if we, well, it's a little more complicated, but if we have this equivariance property, then um, we induce a Riemannian metric on the shape space, which is the quotient space of space of curves by the set of deformorphisms. And if, if, we, know, if we know the geodesics of, uh, of the space of uh, curves M, then we, we can, to, to get the geodesics between the shapes, we just have to compute the Characterize the horizontal geodesics of our space of curves, which is not that simple, but okay. Um, now, to illustrate the, the importance of this reparameterization invariant um, uh, property, I'll just talk about the L2 metric briefly, which is probably the most natural metric to think of on the space of, of curves. So, to make it reparameterization invariant, uh, you need to take into account the velocity. So, here you you consider the, the norm of the velocity, that way if you compose by the same deformorphism phi here, you get phi prime that comes out and you can change um, variables. So you get, if you have this, you get your equivariance property. Now, um, if you don't do that, then you can always find a deformation as small as you want that goes from one curve to another. And I'll just, um, maybe it's an example that you know, but an example that was given by Peter Mischer and David Mumford. Uh, so you consider two closed curves like this, and the deformation that starts okay, it's supposed to be in a different column, okay, that starts in the first curve, and, um, and then it deforms this curve, uh, okay, and so here it goes, oops, it goes uh, at normal speed on the first curve on the majority of the time interval, and it deforms this curve on the very, on this interval as small as we want, by going very fast, and until it reaches the, the second curve. When it reaches the second curve, you, you change the rates. You say that it goes um, at normal speed, uh, it traverses the second curve, and then very quickly on a very small interval of time, it goes to the, back to the first curve, and, and, and so then you resolve. So this deformation is, um, has, has a, a speed that is always zero, except on the, on the interval of time which is very small. So, it, it's length is actually as small as you, as you want, and if you don't take into account the velocity, that's the, the problem. So, so uh, this um, actually it turns out that um, Peter Mischer and David Mumford showed that even if we include the velocity in uh, in our, our our L2 metric, so even if we make it in reparameterization invariant, then we, you still have a distance that vanishes in the shape space. So uh, this result uh, motivated the study of more complex metrics, uh, such as uh, Sobolev and elastic metrics, where you introduced higher order derivatives. Now, um, Srivastava and Klassen uh, introduced in 2011 a, a nice framework to study one of these metrics, which is the one that is written here. So here, just these are derivatives according to our length and. Uh, you, so you um, integrate according to rock length, which means that your parameterization is very small. And so this, this metric is nice because you can, it can be obtained by pullback of the L2 metric via a simple transformation that they call the square root velocity function here. 
So this function just takes the velocity, renormalized by the square root of its node. And um, so this gives a framework that makes the computations easier. This was introduced for the plane curves, so curves in the Euclidean uh, space. And uh, it has shown promising results in applications. So this is why we decided to um, adapt this framework to curves in the general manifold. Um, so what we do is, um, well, pretty much uh, the same thing. We send, we send the curves to the tangent bundle TM round um, via the same transformation. And um, we, we equip the tangent bundle with a very natural metric that is given here. So eta here is a, is a path in the tangent bundle, so it's composed of a path in the, in the manifold M, so represented by a surface in the manifold M, and a, a vector field V. So this is a, this is a pretty natural uh, metric to, to, to equip the tangent bundle with, and by pullback it gives, uh, so the very analogous uh, metric, and with an added term with, that um, involves the origins which is normal because you're no longer translation invariant since uh, you're no longer in a, in a flat space. So this, uh, this gives a distance that, um, that is a combination of the distance between the origins of our two curves and uh, the L2 distance between the square root velocity representation of, uh, of these curves. So if you look at two curves C0 and C1 and you, you look at the path C that, uh, C that links C0 and C1, then the length of this path with our metric will, will be expressed by this, uh, this formula, where here you have the velocity vector of the curve linking the origins, and here Q is the square root velocity representation of the path C. Now, what we want to do in practice uh, is be able to compute the distances and compute means and medians. So now we have our, the expression of our of our metric G, but we have to characterize the shortest path of so the geodesics in order to be able to compute the distances. So we do that in the very classical way. So we, we, we use variational principle. We so we have the energy, introduce a notion of energy of a curve here. We know that it is enough to minimize the energy in order to find the, the geodesics. So if you consider two curves, C0 and C1, what we want is to find the path C of S that links C0 to C1 which is a, um, a critical value for the energy. So we consider a variation, c hat, uh, which has parameter a. For a equals zero, c hat is equal to c. <coughs> and c hat fixes the, uh, the extremities of c. And, uh, okay, so the, the energy of c hat is uh, denoted by e hat. It's a function of a. And we want c such that the derivative of e hat in a equals zero vanishes for all uh, variation c hat. So in our case, here uh, e hat is given by this formula where we just replace g by the, the, uh, the expression of our metric g. We compute the derivative and uh, after a few uh, manipulations we, we, can, we get the following equation here. So for a equals zero. This is nice because here we isolated the terms um, that mentioned the, the variation c hat. So this term here, this has to be zero for any variation c hat. And this term here tells us how we move the curve c for t equals zero. So this gives us the way that we uh, move the curve uh, between the origins. And this term here gives us how we move the rest of the curve c, of the path c. So these two terms can be chosen independently and they can be chosen to be whatever we want. So this gives us that this term equals zero for all s, and this term equals zero for all s and all t. So anyway, what we get is um, geodesic equation, the geodesic equations for all time s, and uh, yes, yeah, so the equations describing the optimal deformation from one curve to another. So C0, if C0 and C1 are two curves, uh, the, the optimal deformation C, um, that the optimal deformation C that goes from one to the other is described by these two equations. So uh, the first one tells us how the how the first uh, the, fir the curve linking the origins is is uh, is uh, describes the curve between the origins, and this where Q is still the square root velocity function of uh, of the, the path C. This gives the the rest of the evolution. So uh, in practice, what we have is a series of points. So we link them together. 
by many portions of geodesics. And so we want, what we want is uh, to, uh, to be able to approximate the deformation of our curve in a certain uh, direction, u0. So basically it's computing the exponential map for our uh, metric g. So if we, uh, if we have a certain initialization, we have a curve c0 and a vector field u0 along c0. And if we know the deformation at time c, uh, at time s, sorry, then we propagate the, this optimal deformation uh, by following the, uh, the geodesics uh, of the manifold M, and we and we um, upgrade the we um, yeah we we modify the the tangent vectors here uh, by computing this variation, which is given by the equations that I just uh, presented. So we are we we are. We should be able to compute the exponential map con with, uh, with this uh, metric. And finally, um, this brings us to, to the computations of uh, optimal deformations between two curves, where the, uh, the, we, we do geodesic shooting, which is a very classical method. We have a curve C0 and a curve C1 here. We initialize the, the shooting direction, U0, in a certain way. We know how to shoot in this direction according to what I just said. And, of course, we don't get what we want, so we compute the difference, bring it back to the origin, and uh, very roughly, and uh, update the, the shooting direction and <coughs> until we converge to what we want. We, unfortunately, have no, no uh, convergent result for now. And, finally, the, the, the Frische Mina region is given by a certain pressure flow. We have three curves here that we want to average. We initialize the, the average in a certain way. We compute, thanks to geodesic shooting, we compute the geodesics that link this, that links uh, this uh, median to, to the certain curves. Look at the tangent, uh, initial tangent vectors, sum these vectors, and uh, move the <coughs> region in this direction until convergence. And uh, I will stop here. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. So I'm sure that there is a question in the audience. Yeah. yeah. At some point, the defined variation problem, you want to compute the geodesics. And uh, do, you know, do you actually know if there exists some minimizers? No, you, you should not ask that question. <laughs> um, if we have minimizers of this, no, I, I, I don't know. I guess there is no minimizer. <laughs> I think there is a result. Okay, Martin, you, you, I think you can answer to that question. <laughs> okay, I, I have a question about. Uh, okay, is is there any question in the audience? Because the audience first. No. About this. Okay, you start. In fact, you you. I think if I remember what uh, Anush Srivastava want to do. Okay, the as the the the. Uh, a square root velocity function is, is, is a trick, in fact, to try to find a nice way to solve. Okay, at the beginning it was a trick to, to find, uh, okay, uh, to have this embedding, to say now the metric will be a pullback of some simple metric on the sphere and so on. Okay. But now what you are doing is not this, because you, you, you keep this, uh, this uh, square root trick to derive a metric, but you cannot use it, in fact. It's, it's just... Is it, is that's a way to, to derive, uh, okay, to derive a metric, which is some kind of uh, one first order sub f metric. Yes. But you cannot use it to, f as a numerical, you know, uh, trick to solve the... Well, you, you, you so that's... It's already simplified by the fact that you are looking at this, this representation. Uh, because I can write simply the, equ the equations that I find are are simple. Maybe I would have have more difficulties finding these equations if I hadn't considered this representation. Yeah, but you could you could think about some general uh, sub of metric on the on the manifold also. And so you, can find the same, uh, you could okay, you could start from the, from from saying okay, I will I will build a, a sub of metric. Uh, start with a sub of metric on the. Okay, now I just want to, okay, I, I, just, I was curious about why you start with, the, you use this square root since you are in manifold and so you cannot really use it well, numerically. We, we wanted to, to, to use this, this idea of pullback of the L2 metric and I wanted to 
transport everything to a same tangent plane, which is what they are actually doing yeah. uh, in their extension. But um, finally, we went in that direction, and it turns out that we still have these, uh, these explicit equations. So we haven't implemented them yet, but we hope that they will still okay. be able to be simple enough to have computation. Okay, any other question? Yeah? So if, if your manifold is, is Euclidean space, do you recover the, un, the metric by energy? Yes, yes. We, we recover the, with, 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 the, with the term extra term between the origins. But yes. Actually, their extension and our extension, the difference is a curvature term. So in the flat case, they are the same. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.